What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are gonna be back to work on my 1965 Ford Mustang. As you guys seen in the previous episode, we got quite the bit of work already done on this car. You can see we got a steering uh, column in there. Check that out. Everything lined up pretty good in there. We also installed the dash bar, kind of reinforced that entire area right there. We also threw in this mock S2000 seat, kind of just to see how the steering position would be seated and everything is looking good so far. In the back, we do have the fuel tank inside. Everything is bolted down nice and tight. So we're moving along pretty good on this car. And in today's video, we are actually gonna be focusing on getting the cooling system done for this car. Cause that's like another major component of this uh, engine bay right here. Cause I mean, all you need is the cooling. I don't know if we're gonna do the AC system just yet. But honestly, we can always do that later. There's always going to be enough room and we can always just adjust everything because I'm planning on getting this entire car running and driving while everything is still in primer. So we're not going to paint anything until this car is running and driving until we can do some test rips up the road. So let's go ahead and get started with this cooling system. So here's the radiator we are going to go with. And this is probably the biggest radiator you can possibly fit in between these frame rails. Check this out. I kind of measured it up and then I found the biggest one. And check out how big that opening is. I think on the factory car, the opening for the radiator is like right here, which would remove a lot of airflow from the front of this car. And as you guys know, this is a huge Vivo Coyote and we wanna get this car cooled down properly and we don't want this thing overheating. And this is uh, one of the most critical components of the engine. I mean, if your engine starts overheating, you can possibly blow it up. But as you can see, it fits in there nicely. Now we just need to make some brackets for this radiator to sit in here just like that and i think we might have to do a little bit of trimming on the frame rails because you can see it is kind of tight and we don't want the radiator rubbing against the frame rail and busting a hole in it because metal on metal contact can do that so i think we will do a little bit of trimming maybe just cut a little section out of the frame rail right here and then box it in and we also need to lower this radiator down just a bit so I'm thinking what we're going to do is we're going to trim off this area right here. As you can see, the factory Ford welds are not the best. So I think we're going to first trim this area down right here so we can lower the radiator just a little bit, just so the, just so the cap right here isn't sticking up past the hood. So let's go ahead and get straight to work on it. So guys, we got the car up in the air and now all we need to do is basically just trim right here. We're just gonna slice this off and I think we will have to fold it up in there and actually tack weld everything back together. And then we can do our little cuts right here. We can probably just cut a little bit out of this frame rail and then box it back in, give it that structural rigidity back. So guys, check it out. We got this entire lip cut off nicely. And then what we're gonna do is actually grind this down and then we can push this together just like that and then fully weld this seam up. So we retain that structural rigidity. Now what we need to do is go ahead and lower the car down and we're gonna start doing some test fits with that radiator. So now we're gonna go ahead and test fit the radiator now that all that is trimmed off. And now we just slide this bad boy in there and check. Well, it slipped in there pretty far, but we don't need it that far now. And that is tight. That's gotta be the tightest radiator clearance in the world right there. So now that we have the radiator in here nice and snug, we're gonna go ahead and mark exactly where we're gonna make this cut. It's gonna be a little bit close to this bar right here but that's gonna be perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and mark it and then we can trim a little square out of that frame rail to make this radiator fit in here perfectly. So guys, we just got both sides cut off and now let's do a little test fit with the radiator. And check that out, it just fits in there perfectly now. Doesn't touch the sides of the frame rails or anything like that. And I just gonna try to lower it just like that right there. So I went ahead and lifted the car back up and as you can see, we got this hole cut out right here nicely. And then this one. So now all we need to do is grind all this down and then we can just put a plate just like this right here and then just weld everything up, grind it all down and then our radiator will fit perfectly in the car. So let's go ahead and get everything prepped up, get the plates made and start welding. <music> I got 
center plates made and check out how it fits. Everything is lined up perfectly. Now all we need to do is bust out the welder, get all this right here welded up and weld up both sides. So I went ahead and ground down all the welds. Check that out. It actually turned out pretty good, but unfortunately we did run out of welding gas. So we didn't have any more gas to weld this entire area up right here. But as you can see, it turned out pretty good. We kind of just uh, pushed it up into there and then just started welding it up. And this side also turned out really nice. I mean, there was a little bit of an issue. I don't know why, but this side right here just would not want to weld. I don't know because there was a, there's a piece of metal right behind it. As you can see that spot right there. And maybe there was a bunch of rust in between there or something like that. But honestly, it turned out decent. Now what we're going to do is actually we're going to head to uh, the welding shop, switch out the tank. And then I'm going to stop by my dad's shop because they do have a Mustang over there. I want to see what kind of uh, lines we're going to need because, I mean, we are using the same kind of engine. But I think we'll have to change it up a little bit. I can't use the factory ones because I noticed on the factory Mustang, this line right here comes down. And then there's two more lines coming out of it because there's a uh, reservoir tank, which we are not gonna be using. So let's head over there, get the tank swapped out and go to my dad's shop and check out that Mustang so we can get the right radiator hose. made it to the shop and now let's go ahead and check out this mustang that my brother is working on right now because we do need to kind of mimic the same radiator hoses because i did get the same uh, radiator set up where the top and, and it's on the bottom so let's go ahead and see what they're doing over here and maybe we can grab these original hoses from this mustang and take it to o'reilly's and see if we can get one replicated but he does have the radiator lines off right here as you can see there's the top one and the bottom one and i think we can just take it to o'reilly's and see if we can replicate it because as you can tell this one has these two ports right here and we're not going to be using that because i think it has a remote reservoir that sits kind of like on top of the engine right here but since we're not going to be using that i'm going to try to go to riley's and see if we can match one up without that and also we did get a whole package of stuff in so let's go check that out so check it out guys we got a lot of packages right here we got the brake rotors and then we got the brake uh i guess that's the calipers in there and then the steering shaft is actually right here this is like the coupler that we needed for the steering shaft. So let's see if we can get it out real quick. Check it out, that's exactly what we needed. You can see that hole is a lot bigger than the one that was on ours. So let's head to O'Reilly's, get the correct uh, radiator hoses, and then we can head to the shop and see exactly what we have in all these boxes. So guys, we made it back to the shop and unfortunately we couldn't match up a radiator hose that was similar to the ones that are off the factory Mustang. So we're actually gonna try to use the factory hoses for this car and maybe if they fit up, we'll just go ahead and order us a set and then give these back to my brother. We also got our new refill tank of, I think it's argon. Yeah, it's compressed argon and carbon dioxide. So we got that refilled and then we have a big packages. We have a lot of stuff right here. So let's go ahead and open all this stuff up and see exactly what we have. So guys, let's go ahead and open up all the packages that we have right here. First thing we have is our two bender because we are gonna be building uh, custom brake lines for the entire car. And check this thing out. Yo, that's pretty cool. So I'm guessing you just stick the tube in here, just like that, and you just bend it around. I mean, this is like the cheapest tube bender I could find. Not the cheapest one, I mean, it looked like it was a good one. Cause I seen one just like this, it was like 150 bucks and then this one was 12 bucks. So that's pretty cool right there. So we got our tube bender for all of our tubes. And then in the next package, we have our steering hub. Remember guys, I told you we are gonna be doing a custom steering wheel in there. So I ordered this CNC billet steering hub right here. And then the steering wheel actually bolts onto this area right here. So we can use any type of steering wheel we want. So we don't have to actually use a Honda steering wheel. So we'll test with that here in a second. And let's 
let's just keep on moving. And then we have our steering uh, U-joint right here. This is the one we needed. As you can see, it is a lot bigger than the other one that we had. This one was a lot smaller. So we had to order the right one because I kind of just ordered these a while back. I was just on eBay and I was like, maybe they'll fit, but unfortunately it did not work out. But good thing we have the new one. I also went ahead and ordered some brake clamps. These are gonna hold the brakes in place. Check that out. I probably should have just bought these at Harbor Freight or something like that, but I seen them online. So we went ahead and scooped those, those. And then we have our bigger package right here. We got one more small package. Let's see what's inside here. And then these right here are actually going to be holding the brake lines in place. It's like a little tab. And then you put the seat clamp inside there. Let me actually show you. We did pick, I did actually pick up some clamp. I did actually pick up a brake line right here. This is for a 2004 Mustang. So it's gonna be exactly the same calipers that we need for this car. Which is pretty cool, you know, I'm ordering parts for a 2000 Mustang that are fitting perfectly onto my 1965 Mustang. So that's pretty cool. So we have this right here. Let's see if I can get the back clips out. So guys, check that out. Here is the clip right here. And this is gonna, uh, well, that's a bummer. It doesn't fit on there. We'll probably have to bore it out a little bit, but basically this is gonna slip in here and then the brake line's gonna bolt on there. So we have to like pretty much buy everything custom for this car because we're pretty much just building everything. Now let's open up the big package. This should be the brake calipers, if I'm not mistaken. Go ahead and open it up. And I did just go with regular GT brakes because all the other brakes are way too expensive. And the ones I want are on back order. So we'll, we'll be waiting on those, but we can go ahead and like set up the entire brake system, do all the brake lines, get everything ready to go. We'll get this car ready to move. And check that out, guys. That's a pretty big brake caliper right there, if you ask me. It is a dual piston. So that, I mean, that should be enough stopping power right there for our Mustang. I mean, this car, I think it, it weighs a lot less than a 2004 Mustang, which is gonna be nice, but check that out. We got two brake calipers in there. Fortunately, they didn't give me the bolt for this. So we are gonna have to buy one of those. And then bam, this will just go on there. I'm guessing like this. Bam, we got the brake lines. So we're slowly getting all the parts together to get this car together. And we do have one more package in the back. Let me just grab that real quick. It is our rotors. Check this out. We got our rotors. Man, we got two brand new rotors. I don't know though. These things kind of look small. I'm not sure if these cal if these maybe I didn't get it for the GT. Because I know I got the brake rotors for the GT, but I'm not sure if I got the calipers for the GT. Oh yeah, that's gonna work perfectly. And bam, check that out, guys. The brake system will be going on here pretty soon. So check it out guys, I wanted to go ahead and test fit this uh, rotor and caliper, make sure it's the right one. So if I had to return it, I could use the original boxes and check it out, it fits up there pretty good. And the cool thing about using these uh, factory style brakes is it's gonna be a lot easier to fit like rims on there because the Willwoods were a, a lot bigger than this right here. And you have to get a special custom rim fit up to that. So I think this is gonna work out a lot better than that. And maybe later, I was thinking maybe do a, a Cobra GT brake setup, but I don't know if you have to like change stuff or anything. It's kind of hard to find stuff on older cars like that because that's from 2001. But we got the brake and the rotor set up and honestly it looks pretty good. You know, everything's set up. I just put one bolt in there. And then we also tested the U-joint right here. Check that out. We got the correct spline, so I'm super happy about that. So enough messing with all the nice shiny parts. Let's go ahead and get this radiator done. We went ahead and got some more welding gas. So all we need to do is weld all this up and get everything sprayed in. So guys, check it out. We got everything ground down. I welded all of this right here. And guys, that was hard because I accidentally 
cut a little bit too much of this area when I was cutting it like this. I was kind of sanding this area down, so it was a little tough to weld, but honestly, it turned out pretty freaking good. I'm not gonna paint anything yet. Now it's time to go ahead and fit the radiator in there and start thinking about how we're gonna make the brackets to hold the radiator actually in the car. So guys, now that all the welding is done, we're gonna go ahead and test fit the radiator in here and let's see how it fits. And check that out. It actually has a lot of room. It has like a quarter of an inch on each side. So let's go ahead and line it up on this jack. And then we can start figuring out how we're going to actually brace this radiator to the car. So after doing some thinking, I got the perfect idea on how to mount this radiator in here. So basically all we need to do is go to the steel store tomorrow. I know that's kind of funny. It is called a steel store, but they do sell aluminum rods like this. Or I think they even have solid ones. And basically we're just going to weld the rod right here on both sides and then we have these bushings right here that will then slip on and then we can make the uh, bushing down here which the radiator would just perfectly sit inside there but unfortunately they are closed they close around like 5 30 6 o'clock and it's already six o'clock so i guess we'll have to catch you guys tomorrow and it is super hot over here so we'll probably start off tomorrow early morning so i'll catch you guys then so guys it's the next day here at the shop and check this out, we did get some aluminum from the steel store. We got this sheet right here, and this sheet right here is gonna go at the bottom of the radiator, just like that right there. And then we also got some uh, aluminum rods right here. Pretty crazy, This all this aluminum was only uh, 12 bucks. And we're gonna have to cut that down to size and basically weld this piece onto there and then weld that under there. So let's go ahead and set up our HTP welder we have over here. Cool thing is this thing can weld aluminum and steel which is freaking awesome. All we have to do is actually swap over that tank onto here and then we can actually do some welding. So let's get it set up and see if we can do some aluminum welding. So we got the welder all set up and now we're gonna go ahead and do some test welds. I'm gonna use a little bit of this as a scrap test piece and see how it welds before we actually weld onto the radiator because I haven't used this machine in quite some time for aluminum. I have been doing a lot of MIG welding, so let's give it a try. So guys, check it out. We did a couple of test welds, and honestly, it welds pretty good for just, I didn't really clean this metal at all. I mean, I just wire brushed it, but hey, it looks good. We got the welder set up. I was on a call with uh, one of the guys that sets up the HTP welders. He hooked it all up. So let's go ahead and cut one of these perfectly down to size for here. And then we can also cut the rod down to make our little bushing insert. And then we can get it welded onto the radiator. So guys, here's the finished product. We got this welded up pretty good right there. I kind of didn't mess up right there, but honestly, it's perfectly fine. It's gonna be at the bottom, but man, that weld turned out awesome. And I also sandwiched this plate in between right here. As you can see on the top, there's like this little lip right here and I just sandwiched it in there. So that's gonna give it extra strength. And then check out this side. The welds actually turned out pretty good. And this right here, I actually drilled a hole in this plate and I shoved it in there and I welded it all up from the back. And honestly, I think that's gonna be good to go. Check it out, we put the bushing right here and then we can go ahead and build the actual bracket that's gonna go around here. All we're gonna need is a piece of steel with a uh, circle hole drilled in it, and then this will slide up in there. So let's go ahead and get that thing built so we can get this radiator mounted in the car. So I got both brackets made and check it out. They sit just like that and they're gonna be welded to the frame rail on this side right here. They're kind of just on clamps right there. So there's kind of like a little gap, but it will go up. And now this is the little radiator bushing. So basically we need to position the radiator perfectly, drill a hole in there. And that is what the radiator will sit on right here. So let's go ahead and start test fitting this radiator up and get both of these, uh, I think it's an inch and a half holes drilled in here so we can have this radiator sitting in here flush. So we got the holes drilled in the brackets and then we also went ahead and just threw in the radiator and check that out. Everything lines up pretty good. 
and it doesn't it doesn't even move around anywhere like that but it is sitting on rubber so there's no metal on metal contact and it's literally sitting at the perfect height also check that out there's gonna be enough clearance for this cap right here i've already measured everything out but now what we need to do i'm not going to weld the bottom brackets just yet because in order to weld steel we'd have to switch everything out of the welder so i think what we're going to go ahead and do is build the top bracket so we're basically just going to build i'm going to build a brace coming off here and it's just going to get bolted on right there so let's go ahead and get to thinking and build a little brace for it so the way we're going to build the side brackets for this radiator we're basically going to bend it perfectly and it's going to go from here and then it's going to get bolted on down there because i was thinking about doing it on the top but unfortunately we do have the filler neck over here and we do want to make it symmetrical on both sides so let's go ahead and do a little bit of bending and get these brackets welded on the radiator So we got the radiator mounted exactly where we want it and check out how I did it. Basically just bent a piece of aluminum, drilled two holes in there, and then there are gonna be two bushings in here, just like that. I only have one in at the moment, but there's also gonna be one at the top. So in total, there will be four bushings holding this radiator on and we'll get some uh, nicer bolts later to dress it up because these are a bit ugly. And that should hold the radiator on the top. Now all we need to do is basically mark it, take the radiator off, and get it all welded up nice and strong with our HTP. So guys, check it out. The radiator will be finally mounted inside the car. Everything will be good. And then we'll have to start thinking on how to do the radiator hoses. And with a little bit of practice, man, my welding is getting a little bit better. I mean, that looks pretty good. I mean, it doesn't look the best. Obviously, I had a little bad start right here. I should have just started, but I was kind of trying to tack it into place because I didn't have no way to clamp it. And I kind of messed it up right there. But, I mean, the welds look pretty solid all the way through. And I think that should hold our radiator in place. So now let's go ahead and flip it over, do the other side, and then we can put it back in the car and get it all bolted in. So I got the other side welded up, and man, that looks freaking good. I had a little mishap right here, but honestly, we can uh, grind it up just a little bit. I think we are going to paint this radiator black so we can grind it up a little bit, dress it up, and I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Now what we need to do is actually go ahead and finish welding up these brackets down here. As you guys know, we had the welder in aluminum mode, so now we're going to have to swap it back out. But man, guys, I just absolutely love the way this HTP welds aluminum, which is kind of cool. You know, you don't have to have a TIG welder because, I mean, TIG welders are a lot harder to use than a MIG welder. I mean, this right here, you simply put the ground on and just weld it just like a MIG, so it's super awesome. So if you're interested in an HTP welder, I'll go ahead and drop a link down below. Definitely check them out if you are in the market for a new welder. Now let's go ahead and swap the welder back to steel and get these brackets down here welded up. So I got both sides welded in and guys, check out those welds. The welder is doing a lot better than it was. I guess when I switched the settings from aluminum to steel, I picked the better settings than there was on there before. Now let's get this area painted and we can bolt this radiator in there for good. So guys, we got everything nice and painted. Check that out. We just sprayed some etching primer and then I threw some black paint out of a can. I know you guys hate on the black paint out of a can, but honestly guys, most of this stuff is all gonna get re-sanded down. And then once we get the engine out and once we're ready to actually paint the engine bay, we're gonna sand everything down and throw some base coat, clear coat on everything. So let's go ahead and let this paint dry and then we can put the radiator in. So there we have it. The radiator is fully mounted in the car. And honestly, I'm quite happy how it turned out. Look at those welds right there. And then this side looks pretty decent. We'll probably have to grind it down. Maybe I'll add a little bit more welds. I just didn't want to risk uh, going through the radiator, maybe uh, heating it up too much. But honestly, guys, I have a little bit more confidence. I could probably grind it down and put a little bit more just to dress that up. But I think we are going to make a nice radiator uh, plate right here, or like a cover. Maybe make it come out like that. So 
there it is guys the radiator is mounted tight and then we will have to order some more bushings i need uh two more bushings fun fact those are off my nissan Sentra over there so i'll just have to order some for our nissan Sentra. and i think i might put another bushing on this side right here also so it's kind of like two bushings just so this radiator gets held in there and it's not too tight and does it vibrate apart and then with the hose situation we are gonna have to buy a custom hose for here because the factory one just will not work i did go to o'reilly's this morning and i actually picked up this hose right here and it actually goes pretty good i think we can just order a factory hose like this or go to o'reilly's and find another hose with a bend and then we can slice this hose in half right here and then just send it like that and then connect those we will just have to figure out something with this top hose because it is a little tricky right here but man guys it's coming together so guys that's gonna be a wrap for today's video we've got a lot of work done on the front end of this car we have to make custom radiator brackets we have to cut the frame rails on this car but finally we've got this big radiator in the car which i'm super happy about everything lined up perfectly you know nothing's touching anywhere there's some pretty tight clearances down there tight clearances right there we did have to order some custom radiator hoses that are going to connect right there but that should come in in the next episode we will go ahead and put the radiator hoses on we'll also go ahead and connect the steering wheel we can do the brakes guys this car is coming along so stay tuned for the next episode if you enjoyed today's video go ahead and hit that subscribe button thanks for watching